This book is called Night Driving. Great book. So here we go. My dad and I are driving west. We started this afternoon and I'm excited because it's my first trip to the mountains and we're going to sleep in a tent. Ahead, the sun sets in a mix of orange and pink. Are we almost there? Oh no, it's a long way. We'll do some night driving. Why are we going to drive at night? It's cooler when the sun is down and we have the road to ourselves. We should see mountains by morning. Dad turns on the radio and finds a game. Listening to baseball helps eat up the minutes. I imagine the car as a giant mouth gobbling up the road. Look, there in the ditch, Dad hits the brakes and two pairs of eyes shine. Those are mule deer. I watch the deer leap a fence and bound into a field. Many animals come out at night, Dad says. Keep your eyes open. As we drive, Dad unscrews the cap of his thermos. Can you take the wheel? Sure. I watch the lines and steer straight while Dad pours coffee. Steam rises from the cup. I like the smell of coffee, but the taste is too strong. As he looks ahead, my dad tells stories about when he was a boy. I look at his face and imagine what he was like. Behind him, the sky is black. In front of us, it's purple. These summer sunsets on the prairie seem to last forever. How late can I stay up? As late as you want. Behind us, like a giant's nightlight, the full moon has risen. That moon is so bright, Dad says. We could drive without headlights. Really? Sure. No cars on a straight road? This is a good spot. He slows down, then clicks off the lights. Wow, the road glows in the moonlight. Dad turns the lights back on. I can still see. Yep, he says. Same moon out here, but it's so much brighter. Clump, clump. What's that? Sounds like a flat. Dad tightens his hands on the wheel as the car bumps to a stop. Will we still make it to the mountains? Oh yeah, you can help me change it. I hold the flashlight as my dad gets tools from the trunk. He presses the jack and the car lifts off the ground. I hand him wheel nuts and when the spare tire is on, he lets the car down. After he puts the tools away, dad stretches and rolls his head. There's the big dipper. He shows me how to draw a line from two stars in the dipper to Polaris, the North Star. The sky here is huge and a chorus of crickets chirp. I pick up a smooth rock. Watch my fastball. I throw as hard as I can and the rock sails into the dark. Back in the car, the game on the radio has faded, so I switch to Western music. Dad teaches me cowboy songs and we sing together. A semi passes us with its lights glowing. Dad flashes the headlights so the trucker knows it's safe to pull back in. Then the trucker flashes back to say thanks. We stop at a gas station in a small town. While my dad gets the tire fixed, I help the attendant. He lets me pump the gas while he washes the windows. My dad comes over holding a sharp piece of metal. This was in the tire. He fills his thermos at the cafe next door and we each get a donut. As we leave town, two juicy bugs splat against the clean windshield. Let's play the letter game. A is ashtray, my dad starts. I watch until we cross a dry creek gulch. B is bridge. At Y, Dad points to his mouth and yawns. I look over at the green glow of the speedometer. And Z is zero. It's cooler now. I reach in back for my blue jacket and put it on. Do you want to rest a while? Dad asks. Oh no, I'm not tired one bit. No stations come in clearly, so Dad turns off the radio. He sips coffee and tells me stories about growing up. He tells me about his dad who died when I was little. Your grandpa was left-handed and a fine pitcher. 
He might have played in the big leagues, but he hurt his arm one summer when he threw too much. He always loved baseball. I love baseball. He would have liked knowing you. My dad's talk. My dad stops talking, and I know he's thinking about his dad. I wish my grandpa was still here. We drive a while in silence, and I listen to the hum of the engine. We stop at a wayside rest where the outhouse smells bad. Inside it's dark and flies buzz. I hold my breath and I hurry to finish and then I rush outside. My dad laughs. Let's go down to the water. As we walk, a cloud crosses the moon. Use your night vision and let your eyes adjust to the dark. At the river, I put my hands in. That water's cold. It's from snow in the mountains. My dad bends down, cups water, and splashes his face. I do too. The cool air on my wet face feels good. We squat together and listen to the gurgling water. As we walk to the car, I look up at a million stars and find Polaris. Now we play an alphabet game of people. A is Abraham Lincoln. B is Babe Ruth. My dad tells stories about each person, so this game lasts a long time. There are no other cars out now, and we've been driving for hours. I hear the thump, thump, thump of tires rolling over cracks in the road, and I wonder if I'll stay awake. I look over at my dad's heavy eyes. Are you getting tired? Yep, he says we need a break. Ahead, orange letters flash eat. Stopping for breakfast, Dad says, is my favorite part of driving at night. Inside, people are talking and eating. A cowboy is singing to the jukebox. You sing as bad as you tip, says the waitress. Worse, says the cook, and everyone laughs. The waitress is surprised when she comes to our booth. You're up early. Late, I say. We've been night driving, and I stayed up the whole time. When the food comes, the pancakes are so big they cover the plate. Night driving makes me really hungry, I tell my dad. Me too, he says, and we both smile. After we eat, dad reads the paper and drinks more coffee. Behind him, the sky is lighter. When dad finishes, we walk outside. Suddenly, I see giant peaks, sharp as bear's teeth, that push into the sky. Look, dad, the mountains! I feel his hand on my shoulder, and way up high, I see snow sparkling in the light. We made it, I say. Let's go set up the tent. I hope you enjoyed that book. It's called Night Driving by John Coy. Probably a book you haven't heard before, but one of my favorites. I wanted to give you guys some ideas on some stuff you could do that goes along with the story, and maybe you could make a book for us and make a video and read it to us and then post it in the comments for other kids to enjoy. One idea you could do in the story, the boy and his dad played the game, A is for ashtray, B is for bridge. So I thought you might like to make a book uh, looking at things around your house that you could find and you could do A through Z and draw pictures or take pictures of things and you could either do this inside or outside or walking around your neighborhood and then you could share the book with us. Or if you wanna do the other idea that the boy did with his dad and make a book with famous people or cartoon characters or movie characters, you could draw them or take screenshots of them with your uh, iPad or your mom's iPhone and you could make those into a book like O is for Olaf, P is for Pigeon that doesn't like to drive the bus. Uh, there's also lots of cool videos online that I know a lot of you have been doing to draw favorite characters too. So you could actually do a YouTube video to draw the character that you're using for each letter. That could be kind of fun and I would love to see your creativity. The last thing I thought of uh, that I think would be fun to do in the story, they get a flat tire. Well, since we're not going a lot of places right now and all of us seem to have more time than we're used to, I thought it might be kind of fun if you take your mom or dad, head out into the garage and ask your mom or dad if they can help you and teach you how to change a tire. And maybe you could take a video for us and teach other kids how you learned how to change a tire. So 
kind of a cool life skill. We definitely have time at the moment, and I know other kids would love to see how you actually do it. Most kids probably have never helped their dad or mom change a tire, so that would be kind of cool too. So I can't wait to see what you guys do. If you enjoyed this, comment below, and I will try to pick a different story every couple days and share a new book with you. Thank you for your patience. I know my first video was uh, backwards, and for some reason it didn't start until I was on about page five of the story. So I wanted to redo it so that you would get the entire story. So if you have comments on how I could make it better, please tell me those too. You guys know that I'm a teacher, but teachers are learning too, and this is only my second Facebook Live ever. So I could definitely use any tips that you guys might have. So have a great night. I hope you have a delicious dinner. And I hope I get to see you all soon. Have fun.